Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. Today on the AppSheetTraining.com webinar, we are going to cover how to build a real estate app that manages files and documents. So we had a previous webinar several months ago about automated document generation. And in the end of it, we were trying to connect the documents that were created by AppSheet into the data table so that we could access them from inside our app. Uh, that has been a tricky process inside of AppSheet for a long time, but recently they added some new functionality where you can use Google Drive folders as a data source inside of AppSheet. And so we're gonna to try to leverage that technology, uh, those new features to kind of improve how we generate and access documents through an AppSheet app. And so we're gonna explore those features uh, and kind of see what it looks like to use AppSheet to manage uh, document pipelines. So the reason we're doing a real estate app is because real estate transactions usually require lots of supporting documentation, as well as some things that need to be auto-generated, maybe bill of sale or something, you know, there's more technical pieces, but uh, it's a document heavy workflow. So though the topic is real estate, this could be applied to any document heavy or file heavy workload or workflow. Uh, now, before we get started, I want to do a quick shout out for some fun things we're doing at appsheettraining.com. Uh, number one being live boot camps. So we launched these recently. Uh, they are 12 hours of live deep dive training sessions where we go through both an app build and foundational topics uh, over the course of two weeks and six sessions. So these have a live instructor where you are getting amazing educational content and a real fast track on getting handles around how to use the AppSheet platform. So if you're new to AppSheet, I recommend the AppSheet Proficiency uh, Bootcamp. So you'll build a invoicing application that has, uh, you know, good, strong data relationships and takes advantage of a lot of the core features of AppSheet. And then if you are already familiar with AppSheet and you're comfortable building simple applications, but want to learn how to build more logic intensive apps, I recommend the Expression Mastery Timesheet app where we will go in depth on how expressions work inside of AppSheet and how they really multiply the power of what you can build um, with that. So these are really awesome. And we also just released a new on-demand path for a vehicle inspection application build. So this is where we walk from start to finish through an advanced vehicle inspection app that is fully featured and production grade. So great value here. And we'll kind of walk you through that entire process. All righty. Well, let's get into the meat of today's session. We're going to start off with just this folder in Google Drive. Uh, right now, Google Drive is the only supported file store for AppSheet, but it is in, according to their documentation here, it is in the plans for them to uh, support other folder data sources in the future, maybe Box or Dropbox or Office 365. So let's see what it can do and get excited about what it might be able to do in the future as they invest more into it. I've got one file in this folder, corporate plans, vertical prices, PDF. This is actually some old sales document from AppSheet. Uh, so I'm gonna start by creating a Google Sheet. So this app is completely from scratch and uh, let's just call it AST Real Estate. And on in these real estate transactions, uh, let's keep it simple and let's just say we have properties and I'm going to start with an ID. I'll name this sheet property. So a list of properties, name and an address. And then let's say a status column. We'll probably add more as we go and build this out. Um, but you'll get to kind of see the whole process. I'm going to add another sheet and I'm going to list this as documents, uh, a document table. So I always bounce between, should I pluralize a name or should I keep it singular? Database best practice is to keep your table names singular. So 
I will try to abide by best practices here. So let's give an ID for our document. So AppSheet knows how to uniquely identify each file. And then I want to attach these to a property. Uh, so I want to be able to actually relate back what documents are related to what property deal. So in order to do that, I need a column that represents the property ID, and that should match the value in the ID column in this table. And then we'll give a name and we will give a, um, like maybe a file path or something, the actual file. And why not throw some good metadata like created date and created by. I like to bold my first row and AppSheet prefers it when I have a little bit of data in here. So I'm just gonna make up a key and I'm gonna put in an address. We'll say this is the crew office. Um, Let's say we are 1700 Southwest Parkway 104, let's see 200 status. Um, we'll start as a lead. And then we'll have no documents in there just yet. I have this one piece of data and I'm going to go over here to AppSheet so this is AppSheet.com. I've logged in and I'm gonna start with this quick start and press create a new app. And I'm gonna start with my own data. And let's call this sales and CRM. I'm gonna choose my data. I'm going to add this from Google and inside real estate documents, I'm gonna find that file and connect the app. So right now we're kind of setting this up as a traditional app sheet app without the Google Drive folder integration. And I'll kind of show you how files work in uh, the app as it is. So what's the default settings for adding files inside of app sheet. And then we'll explore the Google Drive integration later. Let's add a new table for our document. App sheet has suggested it. I always like to start by configuring my columns appropriately. So I've introduced the tables and now I want to make sure AppSheet is treating the columns the way I want to treat them. So good, it has found the ID, marked it as the unique key for that row. And it put an initial value of unique ID right here, which is gonna generate a random uh, six digit or eight digit hexadecimal value. I don't usually wanna see that so I'm gonna not show it for now because it doesn't make sense to users. That's why there's a label here to explain to a user what they should see to understand this record. AppSheet needs to see an ID. Users need to see a text or human readable label. I got a name column, got an address column and status is text. Let's go ahead and make this a button field. Lead. Um, let's call it pros perspective and then under contract and sold. Okay. And we're not going to allow other values for now. And I want these to be buttons done. Save that real quick. AppSheet's telling me a little warning here saying, hey, you can't search for the ID anymore because you hid it from me. So that's fine with me. I'm not going to worry about it. Usually the yellow warnings are not that important. The red ones will stop your app from working and you should deal with those. And the same thing here. I'm going to make sure that the ID has a unique ID formula and I'm going to hide that column. Now the property ID, I want this to relate back to my property table so that I can bind a list of documents to my property. So right now this is text, but I want it to be 
of type ref. So this is a special field that allows me to say, hey, this, the values that are gonna go in this column actually belong to another table. They are key values from another table. Which table? The property table. And I'll show you what this is part of does a little bit later. It'll be useful for this case. File is set. And now let's look at some of the settings for file. File doesn't have much configuration options for you, but it does give you this image or file folder path. So what this does is actually it has a default way of storing and organizing files inside of Drive um, or inside of your file system. You can customize how AppSheet handles files and, and putting them in locations and naming them with this image file folder path. So I'm actually going to uh, do that here. Because these are all related to a property, these documents, I want to prepend the file path with the property name. So I'm going to start with a slash. And then I'm going to add or uh, not add, you have to use the ampersand to join two pieces of text together. I'm going to reach in through my reference point at the property ID, and I'm gonna use the, uh, the dereference, where is it at, columns? No, it's not showing it to me right now. I'm gonna use a dereference formula where I put a dot, I'm going to reach through that property ID and I'm going to grab a column from that table. That column is going to be the name of that property. Um, actually, let's do the address. And we're going to close that with a slash. So this is going to prepend the file path. Uh, when I load this file in, it's going to prepend its path name with this, uh, the address it's related to, and should put it in a subfolder. So anytime the uh, app sheet reads a slash, it's going to make a subfolder when it creates the new file. And I'm going to save. All right, that has loaded. Um, what next? Let's make sure these created date and created by are set appropriately. Today is auto set to, uh, or the created date is set to the today formula. I want to mark the user by using the user email formula. So whoever's logged in, it'll put their email in here. Okay. Now let's start by, oh, I spelled that wrong. Quick fix, user mail. How about user email? That's the one. Okay, so we have our property. It's in status lead because I set it to buttons. I could change it. So let's move it to perspective. And I have this related documents here because I joined the tables together with this reference column in the document table. It looked at the property table that it was referencing and said, okay, because documents will contain a property value, I'm going to make a virtual column. So this is the column that AppSheet calculates every time the app is loaded or uh, data is changed inside the app. And it's going to run this formula. And this generates a list of related documents. So any document that contains this property's ID it will show here. And AppSheet shows it in this nice inline list view. And we get an add button. So let's go ahead and press add. And let's call it... Uh, the initial property PDF. And 
I'm going to click the file. The file types that you can upload here are basically PDFs, images, videos, audio. Um, not all of those can you access in inside of AppSheet. Uh, anything that can be shown in a web browser, you can visualize inside of the app. Um, but let's start with this guy right here. And you can see my email and the date are populating right. Fantastic. I'm going to save that and I'm going to force the sync. Okay. So we have our document. If I click on it, it opens up this kind of file viewer. That's nice. If I was on mobile, it would open up uh, this inside of my AppSheet app in sort of a browser viewer. And it named the file. It kind of whatever it wanted to name it, uh, which is a little strange. I don't know if I like that. But let's see where it went in Google Drive. Okay. So we ended up with a folder inside of real estate documents with the property name, which is what we wanted. And inside of there, we get this file. Now, let's see. Um, if you can't find your files or you're curious where they're at, if you go to the info menu and the properties tab, Inside of app properties, there is a default app folder. So this is the default location for any app files that you generate inside of AppSheet. Now, if you like cloned an app and all of the source files for your app were inside of this folder, so like I'm going to duplicate this tab and I'm going to go hunt for that folder that AppSheet created when I built this app. It's inside my AppSheet folder, inside of a data folder, and then there's one called AST real estate demo dash numbers. So inside of data, there should be an AppSheet real estate demo. And then there's just an empty text file because AppSheet needed one to create the folder. Normally things would appear in here, but because my main spreadsheet that the app is created from is in a different folder, AppSheet is adding files relative to the location of that spreadsheet. So that's why it landed in real estate documents instead of the default app folder. Now, I think that's confusing personally. Uh, if it's a default app folder, I think everything should land here. If I was to change this, I would expect AppSheet to dump everything where I changed it. But, you know, AppSheet doesn't do that and you don't really have a lot of control and it's sort of mysterious as to why things land in the folders that they do. That's why it was difficult in the uh, document generation webinar a few months back for us to actually locate the file programmatically. Now, hopefully we can improve that experience with the Google Drive folder integration. So let's take a look here about how to get that in here. So I need to add it first as a data source to my AppSheet account. So I'm gonna open up this tab, should take me to the My Apps page, and I'm gonna go to My Account. And I've got a couple of data sources. I have my default one, which is the Google Drive account for info at apsheetraining.com. And then I have some additional ones, an Office 365 account and a Google Calendar. But I'm gonna add a new data source. And this is going to be, let's say, um, AST files. This is gonna be Google. Well, it already existed here. Let's, maybe I'm doing this wrong. Maybe I just add a new table. Okay, sheets on Google Drive, documents on Google Drive. Okay, this was not here for me the first time. 
document sources. Apps you can extract structured data from unstructured documents. This is a new feature. Folders that contain invoices, receipts, etc. cetera. Uh, choose one of the supported document types. will automatically read and process the information for you. I think I want this folder option. So this is a new feature that AppSheet is in the process of releasing that can actually extract information from documents and I guess provide it back to you in some sort of structured format. Um, that sounds really cool. Maybe we'll do a webinar on that in the future, but I have not done any testing or experimentation with that yet. So let's stick with what we sort of know, folders. And apps just gonna ask me to find a folder and I'm gonna select real estate documents. Hey, Amir, thanks for joining. See you in the chat there. Um, and we can name this table real estate documents. Let's do that. All right, so it looks like by default, this comes in as read only. Let's see what the data structure looks like. <coughs> Table real estate may contain sensitive data in columns file and last modified by. Okay, so we have a path, which is of type text. We have a file, which is of type file and a create time and last modified by, and then a mime type. So that should be what type of file this is. And let's see if there's any settings already set for this file. There's not. All right. And our documents do have an ID field, uh, but that is not shown. Let's create a view for this. Let's replace this map with a card view of oh, real estate documents. Call it docs, get a nice icon. Maybe this one. And let's put some data in here. I don't know if I want this yet. Subtitle, none, path. Let's put the path there. Here, let's put, oh, maybe we'll go mime type. So that's a spreadsheet. This is Google Apps folder, application PDF. and who this was last modified by. What is this action? None, compose email, don't need that. We can open the file, which doesn't have an action icon for it. And then we'll have go to details. And then if we click on this card, we want it to go to details. Okay, let's save that. So that opens up the file that we uploaded. Now, what this doesn't have, uh, so this was a this file here existed prior to us building the app. So that's this corporate plans vertical prices. And this right here is uh, a folder type. So we're looking at the MIME type and it says application slash vnd.googleapps.folder. What happens when I click that? It gives me a 404 server error. And then this one is a spreadsheet. What happens when I click that? 
Uh, looks like nothing. Oh, no, it downloaded it. That's, that's interesting. Don't even know what kind of file that is. All right, so we get a little bit of strange behavior. Um, how can we use this to our advantage? So this is pulling up a folder. I would like this to pull up maybe a list or like a, a nested folder. So I could like navigate to that subfolder. So we had a, a previous strategy of putting everything in a nice folder by property. Doesn't look like that is gonna be very useful with our Google Drive file integration. How can we relate the real estate documents back to a property? Some information that we have is the name of the file. And the path to that file. Real estate documents slash real estate file. Um, let's bring in another folder. Let's do this. Let's change our document from having the property address before a slash and do property address and a dash, uh, dash. I need to put some ampersands to join the text together. And then I want to add the name of this file. So whatever I name it. And I'm not gonna end with a trailing slash so it doesn't uh, create a, another subfolder. I'm gonna go ahead and delete what we already built. So I'm gonna delete this whole folder. And I'm gonna go into my spreadsheet and I'm going to delete this document altogether. And we're gonna go back to app sheet and we're gonna resync the app. Go to our property. Gonna add a document. going to add our file. And we're going to save it. So until it syncs and retrieves back the information from what Google Drive has named it and returned like a file ID and, and some indexing information for that, it just kind of says uploaded file. So I'll sync and get that information and it comes back with a file that has a unique ID. And let's look in Drive and see where this thing is. Okay, so we have a folder created with a file in it. I wanted that to prepend the file name. Not playing nice today. So if you notice what's happening here, uh, it's kind of hard to tell looking in the app, but if we look here, we see that the unique ID for this file is getting put into the name of the file, separated by a dot and the name of the column and then a dot and then sort of a, a timestamp.
see if we can use that to our advantage and actually get a good naming convention for this file. Let's change our formula for our ID. So we'll keep unique ID, but we want to prepend it with some better information such as the property ID dot name. And then maybe like an underscore and the name of the file. Oh, I need some square brackets around there. And let's just get, let's use a shorter version of the unique ID because I don't want the whole thing on there and make the file name really long. So I'm just gonna do the left three items or left three characters of this unique ID. So I'm using the left expression. It takes a text value and a number of characters that you wanna trim off the left side. I'm gonna do three. and press save. And we're gonna re-upload a file here. So I'm gonna remove this file. We're gonna keep it called one pager. I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna grab this B to E guide instead. Press save. And let's look at our sheet and see what happens? Let's see how our file name changes. Uh, I did forget to remove the folder path in front of it. Ah, our ID didn't actually change. So I'm gonna add a new row instead. That way we get a new ID. So we're gonna go back to our property. I'm gonna press add and so B to E file e-guide, open, and save. Now let's check out and see what happens. So we should have a very different looking ID and our file name should be a little bit more sensible. Okay, so our ID is crew space office, which is the name of our property, underscored with B to E, and then the three digits of our unique ID formula. And we can see that in here we have that whole thing pre-pending and then the name of the column and then AppSheet's unique timestamp. AppSheet applies this so it doesn't, because sometimes you'll uh, add things with the same file name. What would happen is it would overwrite that file uh, if, it, if AppSheet tried to add something with the exact same file name. So rather than do that, it puts sort of a timestamp there to prevent that. Inside of our folders, we have B to E here. Uh, let's get rid of that folder declaration and clear some of this stuff out. So no more folder prepending. And we're gonna delete what's in here. And I'm gonna delete both of these. And I'm gonna make those IDs a little bit more consistent. Uh, because AppSheet is separating its file name things with a dot, I'm gonna use a dot instead of um, other things. So let's go here. 
So instead of this underscore, I'm gonna use a dot. And between this and this, I'm also gonna put another dot. Actually, so because I, I eventually want to try to connect what comes out of the Google Drive uh, with the property table, which means I'm going to need to make one of these a reference column, which none of these are really going to work for a reference. And so um, I am instead going to use a virtual column to relate them together. I want to change the ID just a little bit more so that I can extract some information from it uh, more easily. Let's just separate these with a dash instead of a dot. That way we know everything before the first dot in the file name is going to be uh, the unique ID Oh, hold on now, I need the property ID. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, we've done some work. We're gonna load up our one pager again. Press save. Now this should be loading to this folder path. Okay, document dash files or underscore files underscore. That's, don't know why he did that, but the file name is at least nice. Crew office dash one pager dash 735 dot file dot numbers. So that's a little bit better. And I'm going to go back here in my real estate documents. Let's go to the table settings and try to point to the right folder. So we have a new folder path created, document underscore files underscore. All right, app sheet's not wanting to do that. So I'm gonna press refresh. Oh, wrong table. Real estate documents, storage, source path, documents on Google Drive. Not wanting to play nice. Okay, let's just try to start from scratch. That works. Collection of files. Inside real estate documents, we have document underscore files. I'm going to rename this to property docs. And we're going to create that table. I'm going to delete the real estate documents table because that is not really helpful for us right now. And we're going to retarget this to point to property docs instead. Okay, uh, it kind of got weird on me. Lost some of my file stuff. And I don't need this, thanks. So this is not giving me much grouping yet. 
uh, this list of property docs. It's just kind of got the names of the files. So we might be able to do something about that. with some intelligent expressions. Okay, so goals for the rest of this. Let's get a property doc to relate back to a property. Our document table, which is kind of the previous way of doing this, was working pretty well and we related it back by adding a custom column for the property ID. So somewhere, somehow, we're gonna have to get this ID back in there. Uh, let's see if we can add to this. Can we do ads and updates? It says so. Is that another one? File within this folder. Oh, info at user email.com. That's not a one. App sheet training.com. And I'm going to leave the MIME type blank. Let's see what happens here. It's syncing with the Google Drive API. And boom, it brought back some data. Real estate document files underscore app sheet dash B to E app guide dot PDF. So that was kind of nice. The way it loaded its file, it loaded the full file name instead of creating like a automated file name for this. So it kind of acted as more like the natural front end for Google Drive where you just upload the file and the file is automatically named the same thing as the file from your computer that you uploaded. It doesn't look like there's much way for me to provide data to this in order for it to relate back to another entity such as a property. So let me, let me try this. Uh, I'm gonna add something here. Where am I? I'm gonna add a column called code. Uh, wrong table. Inside a property, name, code and um, let's do the code here it's just going to be crew and I'm going to go to my file list and I'm going to duplicate a couple of files First off, I'm going to delete these two pieces of garbage that got downloaded. I'm going to duplicate this. And let's change the file names here. So this says app sheet BDE guide. I'm going to prepend this with crew and an underscore. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one pager or let's, let's do this bootcamp promo. So I'm gonna prepin it with the code of the property. And inside of app sheet, because I added a new column to my property table, I have to uh, tell AppSheet I added something new and it needs to take a fresh look at my data table. So I'm going to press regenerate structure. It should find my code column. This needs to be required. And I'm going to make sure that this is pretty simple. Uh, data validity or text. I'm going to put a maximum length of four and a minimum length of four. So it always has to be a four character code. 
And what I'm going to do is in property docs, uh, let's start by uploading one of our new files. Crew bootcamp promo. I need to put an initial value here because it's a little bit annoying having to type in my email every time. Let's just save that. All right, it's gonna load up a file. Gonna save it. AppSheet's gonna do its thing, create the file in the background. And here we are, this guy. So crew underscore bootcamp promo dot PDF. Now I need to do a couple of things. One, I need to extract this value crew. So I'm gonna do some fancy expressioning here. I'm gonna call this code or uh, property code. Um, I'm gonna do some other things. I'm gonna say path pieces. Uh, so that we can all kind of see what's happening as I break this path apart. So I'm going to start with my file path and I'm going to do a split expression. So a split expression takes a text and then it will break it apart by some delimiter that you give it. So I'm going to use a slash and it returns a data type of list. So it starts with a text and everywhere it finds this character, it will break it apart into a list of things. So basically the, uh, if I had a file path name slash number, and this was a text, What split would do, it would return a list with two items in it. It would have name and it would have number. So that's step one. Save. And let's visualize that. We have path pieces. Real estate documents is the first piece. Document underscore files is the second piece. And crew bootcamp promo PDF is the final piece. So let's see if we can get back. Um, uh, somebody in the chat's asking, how do you make a YouTube video run in app sheet? It's a good question. The short answer is change the type of the column. You'll have a column that uh, takes a value. So you're going to change it to show. And the category is going to be video. And then you're going to put the URL of the video in here. So you may have a column in your row that has a video URL. And so you would add it in like and then that would create a column that when you're in the detail view or form view, it will show a, an embedded YouTube video. Uh, so we're going to scratch that change if I can. Oh, back to text. Okay. So we have our path pieces and let's get the what I'll call the file name, which is the very last part of that path. To work with lists, we have a couple of expressions that'll help us. Um, we might've made this easier on ourselves by using one of the extract expressions, but split is working just fine for now. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to take my list column and there's a 
formula called index somewhere. Index. There it is. A list to search and the position of the item. So this will return one item from the list of the data type of that list item. So if this is a list of texts, which is what it is, it's going to return a single text and the data type will be text. So I'm gonna do use index and the list I want to search is path pieces. And the item I want to get is the last item. So in order to always get the last item, if I just count how many things are in path pieces, that'll give me the last item every time. So however many items it is, that's the number of the item that I want, should give me the last one. Count The count expression counts all the items in a list uh, for those that didn't uh, understand that one. All right, there we go. Our file name is bringing the last part. I like it. We're, we're getting somewhere. All right, let's take it a step further and let's get the property code. So now we're gonna do split again. Actually, we don't even have to do split. We can just do, we know our property code is always gonna be four characters. It's always gonna be at the beginning of the file name. So let's do left uh, file name. Four characters. Say that, see if it works. Property code crew. Okay, let's go one step further. And let's actually get the property reference. So I'm going to do a search. I'm gonna use the lookup expression. This one's a little bit tricky. So the value I'm going to look up is the property code. Oops. I'm going to look it up in the property table. It should match the code column of that table. And then for whatever row we uh, find a match for, the first row that matches, I want to return its ID column. And AppSheet already set it to a reference. There we go. We have our reference column. If I click this, it takes me back to my crew office property and I can see related property docs now to items. Let's go ahead and make the label, not the full path, but the file name, because that makes more sense. Just like that, beautiful. All right, so let's do a little cost benefit analysis of what we've just done. The old way provided to us in AppSheet was to make a table for our documents, which was nice because we could add extra columns like a name or maybe some status or flag column. Uh, and we can apply a direct reference right there. The downside, is that where the files land is a little weird and the file names come out pretty strange. So they're always going to have some sort of numeric value appended to the end of them. There's no way to get around that. Um, and you have to sort of hodgepodge the ID for that table in order to get a sensible human readable and understandable file name, which is a pain. Uh, now, with the new functionality, being able to integrate Google Drive folders, we can 
solve at least the pain point of naming the file. So the file name comes across whatever it was loaded in as and lands in Google Drive just like any other file that you would drag and drop into Google Drive. So that's great. You're maintaining good file naming conventions or whatever you had going into it. They're easily recognizable and searchable. Um, the other stuff that comes out of this is not really helpful to create time and last modified by it. That's okay. Mime type. Yeah, that's so, so. Um, but in order to get more rich information, we actually have to use some virtual, uh, some expressions to parse out the name of our file. And moreover, we have to name our files intentionally on the front end to match some sort of key, uh, some sort of searchable value inside of our property table or whatever table we wanted to relate to or group by, which is, you know, not ideal. I would love to have a column here, a couple of columns that I could configure um, automatically or like uh, apart from what Google Drive automatically does so that we could add things like references and any other metadata that we wanted to track on these files. But we can't do that yet. So we have to work with what we've got, which actually gives us a lot of opportunity for making workarounds for things like this. So let's just add some of that configuration. So because we have broken apart our references, uh, we built, uh, sorry, extracted references to the property table from our documents, we can actually group by property. And let's do descending. So we got crew office at the top, we can see two documents. Let's count them up. So that's nice. And then maybe we'll sort by uh, create time descending. So most recent at the top. And let's try to add a couple more files so we can just kind of enjoy what we've done here. Let's duplicate our one pager and prepend it, remove that copy. And let's drop it in. Actually, I wonder what happens if we go from this side. So we're looking at our property. We have our related property docs, I'm gonna press add. The reference isn't automatically created Uh, because technically it has to be extracted from this. And I'm not seeing that column appear, so it doesn't look like AppSheet's doing real-time processing of this file name yet. So yeah, I, I saved it, and it doesn't appear in my related property docs yet. But AppSheet is communicating with Google Drive and should return some information in about five seconds. Yep, there we go. And when that information came back, AppSheet processed my expressions and... Uh, determine that this indeed is the code that matches this record and my document has appeared. All right, some fun stuff just for the last couple of minutes because uh, I know we kind of went sideways on a few of these things and, and did some discovery, which is not the most exciting, but I'll give you some, some good takeaways. So what if I want an action button on this property table to add a new document instead of having to scroll down and press this add button, which is a little bit unintuitive. I'm going to go to behavior and I'm gonna to go to the actions tab and I pressed new action. I'm gonna call this add file. It's going to execute on a record of this table. And to do this, is going to be uh, let's see go to another view within this app this is a very powerful action that allows you to 
custom navigate the user really anywhere you want and apply some data to, um, you know, from the, the place that you're coming from or any contextual data to uh, sort of pre-populate the view you're going to. So most of the things uh, for our deep linking actions or navigation actions are gonna come from, uh, most of the expressions we will use are from the deep links section. These configure URL parameters that get sent in your browser URL when you press the button and move you to that particular page. We want to do link to form. This is a fun one that allows me to navigate to any form view in my app. So let's go ahead and do that. Pick a good form name here. I'm gonna to go to my app sheet toolbox, my list of views, and I want to add some property docs. So I'm gonna use the property docs form, press the insert button. And then I have some pairs of parameters. Uh, parameters are just things that, that go between these two commas in these functions. Uh, they are the inputs for the function. The link to form, the way it works is I can have column name, column value pairs appended to this, and that will pre-fill any column in the destination form. So in the property docs form, it'll pre-fill the date with this value. So this is an expression that yields today's date. If there was a color column, it would pre-fill it with this rose color. Let's pre-fill. We don't technically need to pre-fill anything. Uh, it won't actually work, but let's just for fun pre-fill the mime type. And let's pre-fill it with uh, the name of this property. Uh, normally, if you were linking into like the documents table, so another table in your app, you would pre-fill something like this column, the property ID with the ID of the property table. So it automatically builds that reference. So it would look like if I was going into the documents table, I would pre-fill the property ID with ID. And that would ensure that the row that I'm adding is related back here. But for now, because we don't have that ability to actually, we don't have custom columns in our drive folder. Can't really do that. Oh, need to get sensible icon. Folder plus, that's the, that's the one. Okay, so now I've got this add file button. Uh, if I wanted this name to be a little more prominent, I could use these hyperlinks down here to navigate directly to the detail view for this, uh, what I'm seeing. And I want my header column to be the property name. And then everything else goes underneath that. So let's change some of the column order a little bit. Maybe I want in the first position, the address and then everything else. And maybe I want to be able to quickly change my status. So I'll use a, the quick edit column position and I'll put status there. All right, that's looking sharp. We'll save that and we'll test it out. All right, let's add that file. Pre-fill the MIME type with the name. Uh, obviously this is not gonna do anything, but this is sort of representative of what you would do if you were linking to a normal data table instead of something from uh, the Google Drive folder system. It'd be nowhere, uh, which is something that you can fix later by looking at your property docs form and changing the finish view to something else or having an event action to uh, trigger another deep link navigation to go back to the place you just came from. But we have our four files loaded in. 
All right, guys, I will make this uh, app public. Uh, put the link in the description so that you can kind of go in and look and see what we did in some of the different areas here. And thanks for tuning in. If you're interested in learning more about AppSheet, check us out at appsheettraining.com. Obviously, we have a ton of free material on YouTube, but we also have really amazing boot camps that will take you from zero to 60 in AppSheet and really get you up to speed quickly. So feel free to check us out. Also, our on-demand paths are awesome and a quick boost uh, in your learning journey. All right, guys, thanks and have a great day.